I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about Kat recently and uh, asking how she's doing with all this. And I guess now is probably a good time to tell you guys that we're no longer together. Uh, we broke up about a month ago. And the reason I waited so long to tell you guys is because I wanted to go through the process of grieving the end of the relationship in private uh, because I feel like relationships really are only between the two people that are involved in it. And the only reason that I'm telling you guys this is because she was on my channel and I know that if she's not on the channel for a while, I know from experience that people are going to ask questions. Um, so that's a big reason why I wanted to mention this in a video is because I would rather there not really be any questions because I feel like I'm in a good place right now where I've like gotten over it and everything. Um, but I would really rather not have to answer any uh, questions or comments, whether on like, the comment section or on like Instagram private messages or anything. I would just like to just be able to move on and it would really mean a lot to me as like a good birthday present from you guys if uh, the rest, like all the comments from this video could be about the rest of the video and not this little aspect. Um, so that's it. The rest of the video is much happier. So I hope you guys enjoy my video. Today is my twin's 28th birthday, and she still has to go into work, even during this whole schmorn schmeen thing, so I thought what better way to start off our schmorn schmeen birthday than for me to wake up extra early and make our favorite pancake recipe. So that's also why I'm doing a voiceover, because I didn't want to wake her up while I was cooking. But this is the recipe that we use anytime we make pancakes. It's from Issa Chandra Moskowitz. And her book that we got it from will be in the description along with her blog post that just has this recipe in it if you only want the pancake recipe. Also, I definitely recommend following what her recipe says and not doing what I do because as you'll see in a little bit, I do make a few small mistakes. But with that said, I hope you enjoy the sound of these sizzling pancakes. Well, she wasn't really that surprised, but I, you probably still like pancakes, mm -hmm. then, right? Mm-hmm. He got up at uh, what time? Six. Six a.m. to make me pancakes. <laughs> wow. Brother of the year. Wow. It's not every year you turn 28 in the <laughs> Hopefully what? this is the only one. Are these bloobs? I mm -hmm. can't even tell. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that or chocolate chips. I don't blueberries. Yeah. Both good choices. Mm-hmm. Doesn't taste too awful? No. All right, good, because I accidentally put in um, the wrong measurements for... For what? Um, I was supposed to put in three and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and I put in one tablespoon, which is three teaspoons, so that's fine, but then I was supposed to put in a half a teaspoon, and I accidentally put in a half a tablespoon, because it was really early, and I was like, this looks like a really lot of, like, a lot of baking powder. I mean... I think there's like a, a tiny slight difference, but it's not enough that oh. makes it bad. When I was mixing it around, it seemed like really like kind of foamy. Like I think it started mm. making like air bubbles or something. And then I also accidentally put in half a tablespoon of salt instead of half a teaspoon. <laughs> so it might be a little bit saltier than normal, but I was actually surprised. I thought it was gonna be worse than they are. Mm. But it, apparently it's hard to mess up pancakes. You probably add a little extra sugar next time to cover up salt anyway. That's good, That's a good idea. But that tastes Salty. Yeah, I was surprised. It was pretty good. Yeah. 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 Alright, I can put the recipe in the description. I highly recommend it. We put it in like all of our pancake videos. Is it Isa? Isa. Yeah. Isa. Mm -hmm. Isa Chandra Moskowitz. Mm -hmm. So I just came to Hercules and I asked Max and Dad and everyone here if uh, we could all eat pie together because it would be a lot more depressing if I were to just eat pie by myself. So the only way that we can do that is if I actually put some gloves on and actually help them do something for once. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna eat pie. All by myself. Uh, that'd be like a treat for you, yeah. huh? Then I'll eat it. Eat more pie. <laughs> Ribbon candy has been stacked. They're waiting for this to come up the temp. And while we're back there, we kind of jerry-rigged this FaceTime so he has that on there. And then we can see when this is going up the temp. Let's get up the temp quick, so we should go eat yes, that pie now. Is. Yeah. There's somebody sneaking up behind you, Greg. So, Mom, you when did you get this pie? 
Kara, when did you get that pie? Oh, Kara bought <laughs> uh, Christmas time. Yeah. Oh, I thought you made it. Yeah, I went home. I thought you said you were going to go home and make pie. I was going home and bake a pie. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's a big thing. You're going to lose some pie there. Oh, oh yeah, no. You're busy. That's why I was like, wow, oh, she, gonna she, pull that she off. did that? <laughs> I've only got two hands. I'm Family gonna, curse. I'm Hi, Max, I know you usually shit. don't like. Oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna have any pie. You don't like any, you don't like pie? No. I thought, I thought pie was like your upset. Uh, not upset. If uh, it was exception to sweets. If it was a savory pie, like quiche, would you eat it? No. Cheese, Popeye. Eggs. Popeye. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Popeye, the sailor Popeye. man. Yeah, that's what we said. <laughs> yeah. Did you already have these? There you go. Spinach you. pot pie. I don't know and why you're doing that. We should be well, having it for you. Yeah. But you're doing a good job. He's wearing it. Yeah, I, I like it. This is idea. I was waiting oh, until really good. you were done so that we could. Do you want us to stick together? together or should we next spare the viewers? All right. Okay. I don't want to crack my lips. For your wax. birthday, we will not sing you once. Is uh, apple or pumpkin pie your favorite? Apple. Apple? He's very sure of that. There's no hesitation. Apple. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we have the card in an envelope. <laughs> Don't show this. <laughs> so maybe for your dad's birthday we'll make it's it. Very good for him. It's a frozen pie. Oh yeah, is there is there another pie that you have in the freezer for? Oh, okay. No. That was it. I uh, guess we're gonna have to. Really plan on to this actually whole make one. Well, maybe I can make one now that I have more time off than you do. Do you know how to make pie crust? No, but well, no, I have done it before. I made I made a pot pie before. Okay. It, you know, it's, I mean, it's savory, but I could yeah. also make one that's not savory. Yeah. Oh, yes. I know it's that bread looks Yeah, and I'm probably gonna make some you more bread soon. You should start taking some uh, orders. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, there's birthday cards for you guys. Oh wow. Where'd those come from? Surprise. Oh, wow. I don't know who's is who's, so I'll just have to peek. Because <laughs> it doesn't say on the outside of the envelope. <laughs> this one's Kara's. Which wow. means by default this one's yours. Wow. <laughs> oh, I like I like this. You should have been a detective, Mom. You missed your call. I am a detective. Be free detective Mom. See, that's what happens when I only have two totally hands. I know, I know. I'm sorry, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hear all the mice are organic. Whole foods. <laughs> See if this will focus. I gotta cover up Mom's face. And Kara's. There we go. <laughs> Happy Schmorenschmeen, I mean birthday. <laughs> Kara, crappy, I mean happy birthday. <laughs> Love mom. Kara, try, underline, to have a very happy birthday, Karen. <laughs> it will be one to remember. <laughs> well, apparently I cut an extra piece of pie, so now Kara and I have to uh, split this one. We're really just taking one for the team. Someone's got to do it. I just wanted to thank you guys for taking one for the team and eating pie on my birthday with me so I didn't have to eat by myself. It's pretty rough, I can tell you. I know, you, I know. You awesome. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate you eating pie for me. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit weird to have a birthday with everything going on the way that it is. Uh, it, I guess it feels a little bit more lonely coming because usually if I'm not working, I would come home to an empty house, but it, I guess it just feels a little bit emptier because I know that I can't go hang out with my friends or my family. Like the when I just went to the store, that was the biggest you know group that we're gonna be around. Uh, and Kara and I actually had to cancel a birthday party that we had with a bunch of our friends because a lot of our friends have March birthdays. We're gonna have we were gonna have like one big birthday bash for us and all of our friends, um, but we had to cancel that. Uh, and like I said, it's just it's weird knowing that we're not going to be able to hang out with our friends and family. Uh, and after Kara gets out of work, usually we would go to the gym, uh, whether it's our birthday or not. If it was a gym day, we're going to the gym. Um, and it's just weird knowing that that's not going to happen too, because Kara and I have found that we just like going to the gym. I mean, yeah, we like working out. I hate working out at home, and so does Kara, so we've been way less consistent. Um, and we just really like the social aspect. So it's, it's weird just having the social aspect taken out of everything, um, whether it's like going to the gym, going to work, going like, I mean, I'm still going to work, but just less often. Um, and just going to the grocery store a lot less often. I used to go a couple times a week. Now I am trying to go maybe once a month if I can. Um, my mom actually just went to the grocery store earlier today and she picked us up a couple things, like just like some frozen fruits and vegetables, which I kind of forgot to get last time. Although, uh, if you guys saw my grocery haul, you know that I'm good for a while. <laughs> um, but just like some little odds and ends. And usually like if I forget something at the grocery store or just decide that I want one little thing, I can just go because, you know, usually you can do that. Uh, and it's weird just having that luxury being taken away. And I guess it kind of makes you more grateful when you have that 
when you can take full advantage of just being able to leave your house whenever you want. I think none of us really realized what a luxury that was until we don't have it. Uh, so I'm really going to be more grateful about that. But it is, like I said, it is weird on your birthday feeling more alone because uh, usually that's when we spend so much time with our friends and family. Um, but I'm going to try to make the best of it because, like I said, I, well, like I showed you guys, I woke up early and uh, made Kara some pancakes. I'm going to uh, make some bread uh, for when she comes home and some lasagna uh, just to, you know, I know that she's working today and I basically have the day off. So I was like, you know what, if I can make her day better when she comes home and when she wakes up, like well, I tried to surprise her, but surprise her with food, um, I'm going to do that. And especially since I feel like with me and Kara especially, uh, we like to show that we care by doing things more so than like buying each other things and usually we don't really buy each other stuff for um, our birthdays um, sometimes we don't even for Christmas because like I get you something and you get me something I don't know um, anyway uh, so I'm gonna try to make those stuff and I'll uh, show you guys the when I'm making them it, it, outros are hard don't judge me I totally was about to make some bread but I just realized how hungry I am and I decided to make the most ragtag lunch I've ever made. I have some microwave scallop potatoes that Kara and I made the other day, which I can probably link in the description. We'll probably make a video about it sometime soon. Just some rice because it's so cheap. I'm trying to work at into like every meal, sun dried tomatoes and some peppers that I had chopped up in the fridge already and some onions. Um, so. I was actually wondering if you guys could comment some of your most ragtag lunches that you've pieced together uh, since this has all been going on because I think we're all just trying to make sure that literally no food goes to waste and just trying to ration everything and just like what I'm doing is like I'm trying to put rice in every meal because of how cheap it is so if I can fill myself up on like such cheap stuff especially stuff that can last like I looked it up today if you keep rice properly it can last up to eight to ten years so <laughs> I have a lot of rice right now um, so anyway yeah if you guys can comment that down below I think that'd be kind of fun. I'm actually planning on making an entire video dedicated just to making bread because I only made it once so far and this is just my second time just kind of working my way through it. Um, it came out pretty well last time. I only did a half a loaf or a half a recipe, which is one loaf. This recipe makes two loaves, but I only did a half a recipe last time because I was just first trying it out and I was like, I don't want to have to throw away a second loaf if I mess it up. Um, so anyway, all you have to do first time, first step is <laughs> Uh, you have two and a quarter cups of water. Pour it a little bit quicker so it doesn't get everywhere like I just did. Um, you want to make sure it's warm so that you don't kill the yeast. And I have two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast because if you get it in a pack or like a little package, uh, that'll come in two and a quarter teaspoons. I always forget when you get the um, kind just in the bottle how much is in there, so I had to look it up. So that's why I told you guys so you don't have to look it up. Two and a quarter teaspoons, and then it's just. Oh, let me look that up. I think it's a half a teaspoon. Yeah, see, I know stuff. So half a teaspoon of sugar, and you're just going to dissolve all that in the water until it gets all bubbly. And I don't know if this is a step that you should or shouldn't be doing, so I'm sure the people in the comment section who have made bread before uh, can let me know. But I just kind of whisk it all together, let it all kind of mix in, and then you just let it sit for a couple minutes. And it's basically just, as far as I know, uh, just to make sure that your yeast is still alive, if your yeast is still good, or maybe you use water that was too hot or too cold. Uh, and then if it bubbles up, it's still good. And if it's not, then you're gonna start over with some new yeast. And at least you didn't waste your loaf of bread by using yeast that wouldn't rise. All right, it's probably been about 10, 15 or so minutes. And this is what this looks like right now. It's like sort of bubbly, sort of frothy, um, nothing too crazy. I think that's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, like I think I mentioned before, I'm not exactly an expert baker. I don't, I'm just sort of learning and uh, documenting as I go. So hopefully if there's any expert bakers in the chat, you guys can let me know. So for this recipe, after you've sufficiently proofed your yeast, you add in three tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, and this recipe says two tablespoons of canola oil. I have just done canola oil. You could probably get away with uh, like olive oil or really any other type of oil, I think. Uh, and I, down the road, I will probably try applesauce to see if I could make it oil free. But for right now, I'm just kind of sticking with this recipe because this is exactly what it says. And I just want to go with what the recipe to really nail down this recipe before I go uh, doctoring it up. Next, you're adding in three cups of flour. And then after you add in those three cups, you're just going to add the rest of the flour as needed at one half cup intervals. Okay, I've got those three cups in there and now I'm just going to stir it around. It's a little bit lumpy, 
but now I have all that mixed in and I moved my half cup over here. Yeah, that's a half cup. Gotta double check everything today. <laughs> 20 more mishaps. And in the recipe that I am linking below, it said that you could use a dough hook if you wanted to, but I figured, especially now with the whole schmorange mean, if you have a dough hook or if you have a bread kneaderizer thing, you probably already know how to do this. And if not, if you don't know how to do this like me, then you probably don't have that available. So I'm thinking this could probably be more useful to people if I just show people how to do it by hand because you're probably not able to just go run out to the store and get stuff like that right now. I've just mixed in one cup so far. It's looking considerably more like dough, but still obviously needs quite a bit more flour, but we're getting there. Oh, that's a little more than a half cup. <laughs> Okay, I have added less flour than it says that I'm supposed to add, and it seems like it's got too much flour on it. So I don't know what else to do other than to add some water. So I hope I'm not making too many bakers cringe at this. All right, I only added a little splishy splash. Whoa. Okay, that's really picking up the flour now. Got a fresh bag of flour now, and now flour's all over the place. And now I have dough all over this measuring cup, so it's better be worth it. And my hands are just so doughy at this point, I'm just gonna, I'm just, whoa, I'm just gonna get in there. I'll clean later, don't worry about it. Okay, I feel like this recipe has really gotten away from me. I'm just going to leave the rest of this flour here and put it over here. I swear I wasn't having this much difficulty before, okay? And even though I struggled a little bit, I kind of got where I needed to go. And now I just need to knead this for eight to 10 minutes, roughly. Uh, and I'm just gonna have some flour here in case this gets sticky, but uh, from what I've read anyway, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to kind of fold the dough over like this, kind of like push down like that, do another quarter turn, push down. I don't know if this is the exact motion that you're supposed to use, but this is what I'm doing anyway, and I probably could use a little bit more flour already because <laughs> I don't have any on here currently, and I guess that's all you gotta do. This is what I'm left with. Kind of, I don't know, looks like, looks pretty good. If your kitchen is anything like mine, and this time of year it's not super hot, it's maybe 65 degrees, uh, the best thing you could do is boil some water, put it in your cold oven, and then put back one of these. And then grab your bowl, which I lightly greased with a little bit of oil. I put this in here, and then I'm just putting this above it because heat rises and it's going to make everything a little bit warmer. Um, I also read that you could put it next to like a heating vent or a fireplace or something, um, but this is just the method that I chose. So time to get out of this split because I'm gonna fall and I'm not gonna be able to get back up. I'm gonna show you this really quickly because I don't want all the heat to escape, but this is basically what it looks like. Wow, that's a lot of steam. Okay, so anyway, that's sort of what it looks like. Well, it's, it's all steamed up, but there's a there's a pot of boiling water. Down, well, it's not boiling water. It's really hot water, and uh, the bowl is right on top. I think you get the picture, but that's, that's what I'm doing anyway. And it worked last time, so we'll try it again. And you're supposed to let it go for up to two hours, I believe. If I can pull up this tab, it said... One and a half to two hours. So we're gonna go with that. I just took this out and I wanted to get this video before it falls down even more because it was like it was like a dome, kind of like it rose so much. Uh, so this uh, this whole boiling water trick really works. Wow, that's a lot of evaporation, steam, condensation, whatever that word is. Uh, a lot of that. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And now I'm going to turn the oven on. I think it's 350. Uh, and I'm going to put my lasagna in the oven that I just made. And I can actually link a recipe for this because I made it recently in the description. And I can put it in an iCard up here. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check that out. But for right now, I'm going to stick this in here. All right, now that the oven is preheating, I'm going to flour this surface just a little bit and I'm going to use my floured hand to sort of just work around the edges to take, if you can see that, take the dough off. See if I can plop it on here. There we go. And then you're just going to sort of, well, maybe I should get a little bit of flour on here first so it doesn't stick. Um, then you're just going to, instead of just punch it down, so just get your aggressions out and just punch it down. And then, Going to, well, that's about, that's about halfway. Just cut it in half. 
so that you can get your two loaves out of here. I'm just going to roll this up because that's what they did in the uh, recipe video and just sort of like spread it out like that. Roll this up as well like this and just kind of spread it out a little bit. And I have to get out my, my bread pans because I forgot about that. It's pretty crucial to the recipe. Just gonna give these a quick little spray so they don't stick to the pan when I put them in. And I'm just gonna plop them on in and then I gotta rise again for another 60 to 90 minutes. So it's basically however long the lasagna goes in, which looks like it's going in right now. Wow, this is really perfect timing. Lasagna just got done. over here, well, they will go in once this is up to 375. There's only 15 degrees higher. It's over but, here. Uh, yeah, look how well it rolls, though. Are those pancakes? Yeah, more pancakes. Well, the one side is so much higher. <laughs> well, and they'll only get a little bit... I know last time they were, like, yeah, they got bigger a little bit than higher. that, so... Oh. Yeah. The hotter it is in this room... The more yeah, risen it will get. The, Oven will help. Yeah, <laughs> I hope the oven will help. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so we're gonna put this in once it gets up to 375, and then we're gonna be doing a quick workout because this only takes like 30 minutes to cook, and then we'll probably be done in like 20 minutes. So, two things at once. Birthday lasagna. Maximum efficiency. Yeah. The palms are sweaty. These are are heavy. The vomit on his plate already. Mom's getting he's nervous, but in the surface he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so foul. He opens his mouth, but the words don't come out. Oh. Isaretti, just born bread. <laughs> Oh, it's cutting like butter. <laughs> the bread except, is cutting like butter. <laughs> except it's bread. I don't know, are these too thick or we gonna... No such thing. That's true. Oh, uh, heck. I'm just gonna cut a few. Just, you know, just to be safe. Well, we're gonna eat like half of this at least. Yeah, the other day we were like, yeah, we'll uh, we'll cut half and, you know, just freeze the other half. And then these the next so day it was just gone. Beautiful. <laughs> I've never seen anything more beautiful in my life. <laughs> wow. Even the end pieces are good. Like, yeah. that's how you know it's good bread. Yeah, like the other day. Even the ends are there good. There was one end piece, and I was like, so do you want me to eat it? And Kara was like, no. I was like, can we split it? No. Because I, no. I figured out, because like, I usually eat the end pieces, because like, I'm like, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and Kara no, wanted it. So were you surprised when there was a lasagna in the oven? Yeah, I thought we were going to be making dinner together. So. All right, so I got one surprise out of you today. <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> I know. So I tried to surprise you with pancakes, but yeah, I kinda, even even though you weren't I surprised, I figured it out. Yeah, even though you weren't surprised, you're probably okay with it. Mm-hmm. Well, you also asked me last night, like my morning schedule. I was trying after I was like trying to figure out. And I said, "Oh yeah, because tomorrow's our birthday." Mm-hmm. Because I was just like, "So <laughs> what? What time do you uh, eat?" in the morning. Yeah, I was like, like, why? I was like, oh, I know why he's asking. And I said, no reason. And I started smirking. I'm like, I couldn't stop. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave myself, I played myself. Mm -hmm. But, how's a, is the mm. bread, how's, is it different than last time? Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> I can't stop eating it. <laughs> when my friends asked me what I was doing for mm. my birthday, I'm like, yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. been, Dinner, but I mean, I didn't even know. That. Yeah. So I was like, um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's why I figured I could make today like a little bit yeah. extra special in this way because we can't spend time with our friends and family. Might as well like mm -hmm. have a really good meal. Thank you. Yeah. So I did make this lasagna a little bit different. Um, I didn't add the peppers and onions, but I added some Upton seitan. Mmm. I think it's way better with seitan. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Great with it. I mean, I found that like lasagna is pretty hard to mess up. 
I, the only thing you could really do is like if you don't put in enough sauce, some of the noodles will be kind of hard. But other than that. Delish. Good birthday. Mm -hmm. Not we'll so remember, bad. Remember this one. Yeah. <laughs> As far as birthdays go, really not that bad. I would say my worst birthday ever was when I turned 20 because uh, I was slowly becoming paralyzed, didn't quite get the diagnosis yet, and I also just so happened to get food poisoning, so I was throwing up like every 90 minutes like clockwork. So I'm hoping that that is the worst birthday of my life and I already experienced it. Um, this one really wasn't that bad though. Um, but like I was saying, I was paralyzed. I do kind of want to talk about that. I don't know how many of you are new viewers. Some of you may be shocked to know that, but. Uh, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease when I was 20 years old called chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy and it left me paralyzed in a wheelchair and it sucked. Um, but throughout the whole thing I remained pretty positive and I think a lot of it was because I saw it not as a negative experience but as an opportunity because up until that point I had not really struggled too much in my life. I actually was supposed to write a paper in order to get into different colleges and they asked what was the most difficult thing you'd ever done and I had to write that my most difficult thing I had ever done was Ch uh, choosing between do I continue to play lacrosse in ninth grade or do I switch to track and field? That was the toughest thing I had ever done up until that point. Like, that's pretty easy. Um, and then just a couple years later, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, paralyzed in a wheelchair, and I was like, hey, here's my opportunity. Here's my opportunity to show myself the man that I can become, the person that I am supposed to be, because you don't really know who you are as a person until you've gone through some struggles, where whether you've been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, or you've lost someone very close to you, or you're just in this thing that we're all going through right now. And I can tell you from personal experience that if you see this as an opportunity, then everything, everything is just so much easier. You're just day-to-day -day positivity is just like so much higher and you'll just get a lot more done because if I didn't get diagnosed with my autoimmune disease I know that I wouldn't be here talking to you guys right now I know that I wouldn't have this YouTube channel and this is honestly the best job I have ever had in my entire life I'm so grateful for it and I'm so grateful for where my parents are right now uh, in their job and that's because I started the YouTube channel and like it just everything in my life has been just exponentially better because I got an autoimmune disease like if I could go back and not get my autoimmune disease and not have all these positive things happen to me I would a thousand percent go back and have my autoimmune disease I would be paralyzed again just to be where I am right now like it's so so worth it um, and that was just from realizing that really awful situations can be opportunities for growth. So I just want other people to see this opportunity now while they're in it instead of later on because you can use this opportunity right now to whatever it is that you want to do. Do you want to spend more time with your friends and your, well, if you live with your friends anyway, with your uh, family? Do you want to learn another language? Do you want to learn a musical instrument, learn how to cook or bake or whatever it is that you want to do? you know, take this as an opportunity to slow down because a lot of people are probably not working. Take this opportunity to slow down, learn something new, spend more time with your family, whatever it is that you need to do. Just see this as an opportunity to just, and just take advantage of it. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling now, but I hope that my story helped some of you guys out. Hope you guys liked my Schmorn Schmeen vegan twins birthday vlog, and I will see you guys next time.